Hi there, this is Pastor Ashola here and Doris Famelusi, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Rock Church, where you'll find engaging content that would uplift your spirit. And whilst you're here, remember, turn on your notification, leave a comment for us, subscribe to our channel, and share this broadcast if it's a blessing. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You can have your seats this morning. God bless you. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them God is good. All the time. And his mercies endures forever hallelujah so I thought we should put that one in and uh, just dance a little bit this morning I, 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 because of time I didn't want to take it I would have gone in another step further and say so shake up the beast into the fire oh my god no I, I don't want to I don't want to go there I don't want to go there I don't want to go there glory to God <laughs> <laughs> ah, glory to God. Glory to Jesus. All right, let's be serious, kingdom people now. Come on, you know, let's be serious. Enough of the jokes, let's be serious. <laughs> Amen. How many of you are blessed being in God's presence this morning? God is so faithful. We thank God for what God is doing. We thank God for His goodness and His glory and His faithfulness. How many of us have experienced His faithfulness? You can say God is faithful. God has been faithful to you. Faithful to your family, faithful to your home. You're going out and you're coming in. In fact, that I'm seeing you sat here today tells me God is faithful. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. And we honor you, Lord. And so, Father, we honor you this morning. Thank you because your word, it brings light and understanding to the simple um, Lord, I release myself as an instrument of honor that you might speak through me, that you might bless your people, including myself, that from this teaching, oh God, this morning, we are all going to leave strengthened, emboldened with faith, knowing that indeed we are more than conquerors. And so, Father, we thank you. Lord, speak. Let Jesus alone be glorified. Let every devil be put to shame this morning by the utterance of your word right in this auditorium in the name of jesus and let everyone go home with their answers let everyone go home with their solutions let everyone go home with the wisdom that they need for this week in the name of jesus lord we thank you and we bless you in jesus name amen and amen we thank god for this quarter we've been talking a lot about multiplication faithfulness and 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 so on and so forth and in wrapping it up um the lord ministered or the Lord impressed in my heart that I needed to remind everyone of so today is a reminder amen called I've been told to remind you this morning that you are anointed and separated for fruitfulness amen. you know sometimes we can go through life and you can forget that you're anointed sometimes things can happen in your life and you can just forget that you actually are an anointed child of God come on say with me I am an anointed child of God Come on, say like you mean to say, I am an anointed child of God. Come on, say with me, there is a peculiar anointing upon my life. Come on, say it again, say there's a peculiar anointing upon my life. See, one of the things that the enemy will fight is to fight your realization of the fact that you are anointed. And that the moment you surrendered and you gave your life over to the Lord Jesus, you ceased to be an ordinary human being. In other words, you moved from natural into the supernatural. Hallelujah. You moved from the natural into the supernatural. So that the way of life that you live now is the way of the supernatural. So whenever the enemy comes to tell you that you are nothing and that nothing good can come out of your life, remind him that you walk the supernatural 
kind of life. Hallelujah. Whenever he, in fact, one of the things that I've come to learn is that the devil is a liar and the chief of all lies. So that he has no ability to say the truth. So he comes to you with lies. Don't believe his lies. Whatever the enemy comes to say to me, I know that I am the opposite of what he's saying. So when he says that it is over with me, I know that he's just beginning with me. When he tells me that nothing good can come out of my life, I know that something good is about to happen to me. When he says that I'm a failure, I know that I'm about to succeed. When he says I can't move forward, I know that God just opened the door for me to move forward. Is somebody here with me this morning? I'm anointed and separated for fruitfulness. I'm anointed and separated unto good works. Hallelujah. See, good works and fruitfulness are like conjoined twins that are inseparable. So where you find fruitfulness, you're going to behold a display of good works. Where you find a display of good works, you're going to behold fruitfulness. So when I say you're anointed and separated for fruitfulness, I'm simply saying that you are anointed and separated for good works. There are lots of scriptures that talk about the fact that we've been separated in, unto good works. You don't get saved by the Spirit of God from the ordinary and the mundane to remain ordinary and mundane. God does not save you from nothing to make you remain as nothing. It's impossible. Look at your neighbor, tell them it's impossible. In fact, it is impossicant. <laughs> it means it cannot be possible that I've been saved from a kind of way of life and I still remain. Bible says he picks me from the miry clay and sets my feet upon a higher ground. Is somebody here with me this morning? Come on, say, I'm on a higher ground. Come on, say it again. Say, I'm on a higher ground. When you get saved, there is a heavenly deposit that's initiated from within the moment you get saved. And you cease to become what? Ordinary. Check this out in John chapter 1 verse 12. It says, but as many as received them, to them gave he power. Not to them he's considering whether he's going to give. Or he's thinking, do they, do they actually qualify for it? He says, as many as received him, then he gave them power. So come and say, I have power. So come and say, I have power. And what kind of power? He says, to become the sons of God. To become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. Let me tell you what the Amplified Version says. It says, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right, which means the authority and the privilege, to become what? Children of God. That is to those who believe in, who adhere to, who trust in, and rely on his name, who were born not of blood, natural conception, nor of the will of the flesh, physical impulse, nor of the will of man, that of a natural father, but of God. That is a divine and supernatural birth. They are born of God, spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified. If that's you, wave your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. Because I am born of you, Lord. I am born of you, Lord. A supernatural birth. I am spiritually transformed. I am renewed and I am sanctified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the examples that we have, we can begin to unpack them. First of all, from Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing what? Are you with me? Who went about doing what? So who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. He didn't go on his own charges. God was with him. Hallelujah. And if God is with you, nothing short of good comes out of your life. It is impossible for something different from good to come out of your life because you're born of God. Hallelujah. And Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now that was a prophecy 
about the Lord Jesus when he was going to come. And no wonder when he got to the synagogue in a particular place in scripture, he opened the scripture up and he read exactly this portion of scripture. And after reading it, he closed it and the Bible says all eyes were fastened unto him. And what did he say, what did he say to them? He said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your very eyes. Hallelujah. So from the time of Jesus, it became the fulfillment of scriptures. Your life is a fulfillment of scripture. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about right now. Your life in Christ is a fulfillment of scripture. So the life that you live from today, be intentional about fulfilling scriptures. Jesus went to a place. John told him, he said, I'm the one that needs to be baptized. Why do you come to baptize? He just said, hold on. It is need that scriptures be fulfilled. So Jesus was intentional, was quite clear and understanding that he came to live a life that fulfilled scriptures. You have come to fulfill scriptures. It is written about me in the volume of the books that I have come, O oh God, to fulfill scriptures. Glory to God. Say, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And then the remaining verse there then talks about their assignment. It talks about their assignment. Hallelujah. Everything that you've been empowered in Christ to deliver is not what, or to help people be delivered from, is not what you have. Notice what he said. He said, beauty for ashes. So who has the beauty? Ha, huh. you guys are not following me. Are you off track? Who has the beauty? Who gives the beauty? But it is in your possession. Hallelujah. So you are not the one that has the ashes. <laughs> because you can only give what you have. Glory to God. Beauty for ashes. What else does it say? The oil of joy for mourning. So you go into a situation. They're mourning. But your joy infects the whole place. Hallelujah. It says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So you're not the one with the spirit of heaviness. You're the one with the garment of praise. You don't understand that you're a game changer. Not because you are powerful in yourself, but because of the anointing that's upon your life. See, that anointing has been sent on a mission to make you a game changer. Don't let the enemy trick you again. To make you think you're less than who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the end result of your Christian witness here on earth is good works. Someone say good works. It becomes a proof of God's love, God's goodness, and faithfulness to mankind. Sometimes I look at my own life, for instance. I look at my life. I look at our lives, my wife and I, my home. I look at our lives and I look at how God has helped us in the spirit of obedience. Glory to God. And I began to wonder. See, Rock Church might not be a church of a thousand or eight thousand yet. And notice the word yet. So any one of you who is thinking that this church is going to remain the way it is, perhaps by the time you start to expand, the Lord will send you on an assignment. Because everything living must grow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. But I know that hundreds and thousands have passed through this ministry. <laughs> when I count those who were here for a time and have moved on, when I begin to count them and I sit down, they're not less than their hundreds. Hallelujah. 
in the course of the years that we have been in existence and continue to exist. Amen? Amen. Lives that have been touched, is it on campus? Is it around the world? What if we disobeyed? What if we said no? What if we did not say yes, Lord? See, you have an anointing to fulfill an assignment. Hallelujah. Look at you and know, tell them you've got an anointing to fulfill an assignment. See, your assignment may not be go and start a church. Your assignment may not be, you know, become an evangelist. Your assignment may not be, oh, I must become a prophet. But you must know your assignment. It is a mistake to be in the kingdom and not grow to know your assignment. Because in knowing your assignment is the fulfillment of your destiny, number one, and it is your life's fulfillment, number two. So that you know that no matter what the enemy tries against you, you are right in the center of the perfect will of God. But there's so many Christians today know that they're on assignment as a child of God. The unfortunate answer is no. Glory to God. Look at what Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 says. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Ephesians 2 10 says, for we are his workmanship. His own master work, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed and ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set, so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. I'm reading the Amplified Version, by the way. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. It says, All scripture is God-breathed, given by divine inspiration, and it is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, outfitted, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation and appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodly lust, ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who, himself, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So I'm taking my time to read out this portion of scriptures so that you will understand that the fact that you're now a child of God, life will not be the same any longer. It's going to be a life that's totally dedicated to good works. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So if I'm not encouraging you unto good works, I am not doing my job. If we're not provoking each other to see who can serve God better. <laughs> Do you know there should be a competition? A spiritual competition. Not out of, uh, you know, jealousy or whatever, but a healthy spiritual competition. Wait, no, I, I, I've, got a, I've got a deeper rema. Come on, what, what's your rema from yesterday? And I, I, I got that rema, he said, but let, let me take it. You know how Paul said, he's talking about so many, he says, convert the best, but then, but then I said, I show you a more 
a better way. Which means, let me take you to some deeper Rema. And he began to expose. We should have Rema Sundays. Karabashande. Rema Sundays. Where you come out and say, this is what the Lord said to me. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Rema Sundays. Where everyone one after the other. So at least that will make you read your Bible. <laughs> eh, today is Rema Sunday. Eh, Holy Spirit, you have to speak. Glory to God. Rema Sundays where you're sharing this is what the Lord has been saying. Where, where, where are those days where we sit down to begin to, the Bible says iron sharpened iron. We're scripture, we're comparing scriptures with scriptures. And we're opening up and we're diving and we're dissecting. Thoroughly equipped unto good works. Thoroughly equipped unto good works. I believe the power of God will move greatly when we began to share remas about God. Amen. Because in sharing your rema, your healing comes. You come in faithless, you live faithful. Hallelujah. You come in hopeless, you live hopeful. Why? Because a rema has just been declared. Glory to God. So watch this space for rema Sundays. Hallelujah. See, the days of just sitting and receiving are over. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's over. over. There's no stardom. One man stardom in ministry. There's nothing like that. You see, a lot of people have shortchanged themselves. That's why they keep running to, they say there's this prophetic meeting here. They run. There's this gathering over there. They run. There's this one over there. They run. Oh, this is where everybody is going now. They all, the troop there. No agenda no direction, nothing. Not understanding that God has called you with a peculiar anointing for an assignment in these last days. The blood of Jesus over everyone is not to save you and then say, I'm saved, then come and sit down and smile and just receive the word and just receive the word. The word is to be received. You go out there and make an impact. Glory to God. So Rema Sundays might be, I received the word. I applied it to my business. Look at what happened. Glory to God. See, I received this word. This song came in my spirit. I sang it as I opened up my shop today. And today has been the largest sales I've ever had. That's a rhema. You understand that? Glory to God. Or I opened up at, at office at my work. And my colleagues were just coming around me. And they're they seeing a glow. And they're asking me, what is it about you? There's something different about you today. Why? Because you just come out of a place where Rema has been dropped in your spirit. Hallelujah. Is somebody here with me this morning? Come on, if you believe that, say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. For some of us, there's a David anointing. You know, there's a, that, that kind of anointing where it's spoken over you when you were young. Say, this one's going to become something. The Samson anointing. Say, this one from the womb, he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb. The John the Baptist anointing. For some of you, you have that. But you know there are souls. The souls that are pursuing and chasing and trying to stop you, stop the David anointing from coming out. Glory to God. Glory to God. The souls in your life trying to discourage and defeat you. They're angry at you. They're angry. And it's not even about what you're currently doing, but it's about what they know you are going to become. See, Satan don't go about you for where you are. He goes, about, he goes after you for what you are about to become. Because he has an insight. Say, at this rate, you know, he, don't, he doesn't have the big picture, but he can understand at this rate. If, you can, if this man carries on, if this lady carries on at this rate... So he brings your past against you. He brings that which didn't go well yesterday against you. Hallelujah. And he tells you, do you ever think it can work? Tell him, Satan, you're a liar. 
dance in his presence and say it will work. I once had an, an, an analogy from a man of God. He said, these days, anytime Satan comes and he says, he comes with all his rubbish. He said, I've learned to do this. said because Satan is not worth the argument because if you know who's behind you anytime it comes with his stupidity hallelujah and said he's there quiet and not talking because to engage the devil is to recognize him. To so engage the devil is to think he matters. Hallelujah. And so what does he do? Come on, if you've got the space, just do like this. Man. So the devil is a liar this morning. Glory to God. Is somebody with me this morning? So anytime he comes there, you're a failure. Just cross. If you weren't crossing before, just... So I ain't got time for this. Glory to God. That's exactly what he said he does. And I said, what a wise move. Because the Bible says, even a fool, when he's quiet, he's thought to be wise. Yeah, it's there in the Bible, it's there in the Proverbs. So you do that. So let the words that come out of your mouth be words that minister grace to the hearers. So this time around, you have to speak to yourself. I'm going somewhere. Mm, thank you, Lord, for that open door. Thank you, Jesus. You've made a way. So you're not even engaging him. You're engaging right off. Glory to Jesus. Come on, tell somebody Satan is a liar. Come on, say it again. Say Satan is a liar. Glory to God. Wow, I've not even started this message yet and uh, time is gone. Glory to Jesus. I'm going to close with this this morning and I, maybe next Sunday I'm going to complete this. Understand that there are distractions to master and overcome. Because one of the things I've realized is that Satan wants to distract you from recognizing and harnessing your anointing. But you've got to learn how to understand and recognize distractions and master and overcome them. So look at your neighbor this morning. Tell them you're anointed to make a difference. You were anointed to recognize the distractions of Satan and overcome his distractions. Come on, rise to your feet this afternoon. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Satan is a liar. There are some of you that it's been years you've been trusting God for a certain thing. And I just feel the enemy has come recently to tell you, you've waited for this number of years. Do you ever think it's ever going to happen? God has sent me to tell you this morning that that's the voice of a liar. Hallelujah. That's the voice of a liar. Because he has no ability to tell the truth. So just pose, just do your pose. And just say, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Rather choose to see angels ascending and descending at that moment. That's how you fight your battles. And that's how you tell the enemy, I don't recognize what you're saying. Because I know what my God has said. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands and begin to worship Him this morning. Lift up your hands and begin to bless his name. Lift up your hands and begin to glorify him. Lift up your hands, begin to magnify him. Lift up your hands and glorify him. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great.
my life. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. One more time. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, That greatness right now begin to speak that greatness into your situation begin to speak that greatness begin to declare the greatness of God begin to declare his greatness begin to declare his greatness this week you will encounter that greatness this week you will encounter that greatness declare that greatness speak that greatness magnify the Lord speak that greatness speak it speak it into this week Speak it into this way. Speak it into this way. In the name of Jesus. Declare it right now. Say, Lord, your greatness. Your greatness. Your greatness. Your greatness. Your greatness. Declare that greatness. Speak that greatness. Declare that greatness. It's the greatness of the Lord. It's the greatness of Jehovah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for that greatness. Lord, we honor you. Declare that greatness right now. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. One more time. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Father, we thank you because your greatness is what we depend on. Your greatness will go and begin to manifest whatever is our heart's desires and needs, even in this moment in time, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. For in Jesus' name, we have worshipped. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Come on, let's give the Lord a round of applause as we glorify His name. Thank you, Lord.